In northern South America, 59 million years ago, a large lungfish swims up to the top of its murky habitat to take a gulp of air. At the surface, the fish is vulnerable to being grabbed by the many predators that it shares its habitat with. Because Colombia at this time in history was home to a snake that was almost twice the length of the largest modern snakes. However, Titanoboa was just one of many giant reptiles that had evolved in Colombia just 5 million years after the dinosaurs had died out. And this funny, giant reptile filled land sowed the seeds for the modern rainforests we see in South America today. Titanoboa's ecosystem is known as the Cerrojón and was a tropical wetland that flooded the northern coast of what is modern day Colombia. And so Titanoboa would have swam around its ecosystem much more than it slithered. But also, most animals found in the ecosystem were amphibious to some degree, like turtles and crocodiles, but also plenty of fish, some of which still inhabit South America to this day, like the lungfish. Although the lungfish of the Cerrojón seem to have been more numerous, and some species were also much larger, perhaps growing to 2 meters or more. The presence of a lungfish in the region also helps to show what type of habitat this would have been, because they inhabit oxygen poor leafy and swampy water that they supplement with oxygen from the air. These murky lakes and rivers would have glistened under a much hotter sun, because when Titanoboa was at large 57 to 60 million years ago, the Earth was going through a global warming event known as the Thermal Maximum. These hotter temperatures, coupled with high amounts of rainfall, made the Cerrojón into a watery Eden teeming with plant life. However, despite this, the Cerrojón had a much lower number of plant species than modern South American wetlands. And this could be a sign that the Earth and this ecosystem were still in recovery mode from the mass extinction that killed off the dinosaurs just 5 million years before. When there is a mass extinction event, it leaves niches open for the survivors to colonize. The asteroid that killed off the dinosaurs was particularly devastating to plant life because it caused worldwide forest fires. Fossilized plants from Titanoboa's ecosystems and the damage caused on them by feeding insects shows that there weren't as many different plants than in modern rainforests. But despite this, in many ways the Cerrojón was like a South American rainforest that was still in its infancy, because there are many fossils that have been discovered here that are the earliest records of certain common South American plants like primitive beans and of chocolate plants. And these plants may owe their evolution to the Earth being on fire just 5 million years before, reducing the competition and allowing them to spread out. But in the many ways that the Cerrojón would have had plants and animals that would be familiar to us today, it had some leftover survivors from the previous eon as well, most notably from the crocodiles, because they weren't caimans that can be found in South America today, and weren't even closely related to any modern crocodilian species. Caimans are a type of alligator that migrated down to North America, colonizing South America about 20 to 30 million years ago. And before this, a different, now extinct group of crocodiles inhabited South America that were called Dirosaurids. Dirosaurids had been around since the late Cretaceous when dinosaurs were still alive, surviving the KT extinction, but did not survive into the present day, dying around 45 million years ago and fossils show that these crocs had a large presence in South America when Titanoboa was still around. The Dirosaurids were actually largely marine crocodiles, occupying coastal environments around Africa and South America. However, the ones that were found in the Cerrojón seem to have been less adapted to marine environments than their ancestors. One of the largest members of this group that can be found in the Cerrojón was called Acherontosuchus, that may have grown as large as 6.5 meters, so it could have rivaled the largest saltwater crocodiles. The fossils show that the muscles that helped other dirosaurids be stable in strong ocean waves were less developed, which suggests they were better adapted to the more predictable freshwater habitats. It's possible that due to lower amounts of large animals after the KT extinction, they were able to migrate into freshwater habitats or spend longer on land due to less competition. Modern day anacondas are known to occasionally kill and swallow caimans today, and it was previously thought that Titanoboa may have done the same with the much more massive crocodiles that it shared its habitat with. 
but more recent studies have shown that its skull and teeth are very unique among boas, and probably lived in a different way. In fact, its skull shares more in common with other modern snakes that eat fish. So it is highly likely that Titanoboa primarily hunted and ate the large fish in its habitat, and spent a large amount of time in the water. And spending a lot of its time in the water may have been one of the reasons that it was able to reach larger sizes. The dirosaurid crocodiles in this ancient habitat were a lot more diverse than the caimans that now inhabit the region are. For instance, there was a really small crocodile called Cerohonosuchus, that would have been similar in size to the dwarf crocodiles found in Africa. The big difference in size and shape between the crocodiles at this time shows how so many crocodiles were able to live in the same place at the same time, because they would have hunted different food sources. One dirosaurid called Anthracosuchus had a very wide and short snout that was thought to be an adaptation to eating tough prey like turtles. There are species of caiman that do this today, but none are as large or specialised as Anthracosuchus was. It would have had plenty of prey, as there have not only been many turtle fossils found in the Zarahone, but some of them were giants as well. The largest turtle to be found here, and one of the largest freshwater turtles ever known, was called Carbonomies, and would have been a similar size to a small car. It had powerful jaws that it may have used to snap up small mammals, and perhaps even small crocodiles. And there was also a slightly smaller species of giant turtle, called Pentemis. The interesting thing about these giant turtles is that they are not closely related to each other at all, and are from two completely different families that evolved into giants at the same time. So both these turtles are almost twice the size as the largest currently living freshwater turtle, yet evolved independently. This, along with the monstrous Titanoboa, shows that something about the Cerahone was turning reptiles into giants. The Cerahone was known to be much hotter than modern South American rainforests. Estimates vary, but it is possible that the average temperature was as much as 5 degrees hotter than the Amazon. This is thought to be too hot for a modern rainforest to survive in, but the Cerahone could have been sustained by incredibly high amounts of rainfall. In an ecosystem with high temperatures, sunlight and rainfall, there would have been an abundance of plant life and food, allowing animals to reach giant proportions. Their reptilian bodies could have also helped them achieve their super sizes. Cold-blooded animals like reptiles have faster metabolisms when temperatures are higher, allowing them to grow faster. This is probably best shown with snakes that almost consistently get longer the closer to the equator you are. So the choking heat of the Cerahone may have been perfect for producing gargantuan reptiles. However, some scientists disagree with this. Although it is definitely true that hotter climates can create larger reptiles, modern rainforest temperatures could already be hot enough to create Titanoboa-sized snakes and Carbonomy-sized turtles. And there were larger crocodiles that existed later than this, and the largest freshwater turtle that was known to have ever lived, called Stupendomies, lived until as little as 5 million years ago when the Earth had dropped in temperature dramatically from the thermal maximum. It is possible that although the hotter temperatures helped, that the giant reptiles of the Cerahone may have evolved for the same reasons that the new plant species that can be found there evolved. They were able to exploit the gaps left in the ecosystem by the KT extinction. When the dinosaurs and large aquatic reptiles had gone extinct, the creatures of the Cerahone may have taken their niches. And by the time mammals had taken over, and grown large body sizes as well, there was more competition making the evolution of giant snakes and turtles less likely. The giant reptiles of the Cerahone would eventually go extinct, being replaced by large mammals as the Earth's ecosystem started to shift into becoming more like what they are today. Giant reptiles would evolve again, and survived into the present day, but the Cerahone was the last time an ecosystem would be dominated by reptiles. Thank you for watching. A big thank you to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you enjoy content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.